Okay, well, welcome. Thank you, Sarah, so much for joining us today. Now, Sarah is one of our trainers and she has been for how many years now? A long time, probably <laughs> about 15 years. <laughs> oh, and it's fantastic to have you. And now Sarah mostly um, delivers our compliance courses and health and safety courses. So to kick it off, do you think you can maybe just let us know what kind of courses or, well, more specifically, what the courses are that you deliver for One Nucleus? For One Nucleus, I'm delivering the Biological Safety Management and Practice, which is the two day course. Um, and um, that is to um, equip people for um, performing the role of Biological Safety Officer within their companies. Um, and that's a very intense course. People, I know people mm -hmm. find it quite tough going, but we get through a lot of stuff and most people get through the exams at the moment, at the end of it. Um, I also run master classes in subjects like COSH for um, chemical um, assessments and also for biological um, subjects. So I will run a biological safety masterclass. And that's really for people who have got a, have either been doing a job in um, biological safety or who are um, who are approaching it from a different kind of career perspective. So they know something about biological safety uh, and have maybe done the biological safety management and practice course some time ago, but need to update themselves, what's changed. Um, and also one of the things that's very good with masterclasses is that people learn a lot from each other, from you know, the practical, practical aspects. And that's really good. Um, I also run courses, um, but I, um, we ran one about three or four years ago, which was safety for facilities managers, because mm -hmm. they have, again, a different perspective. They may be um, mainly responsible for ordering um, equipment and for making sure it all keeps running, but they need to know about safety too, because there are statutory safety um, tests that need to be done on things. And the safety dimension is very much part of a facilities manager role. Um, and so that hasn't been around for about three years, I don't think. Um, and I do one day laboratory safety as well too, mm -hmm. which is introduction to all the topics which are mm -hmm. of um, relevance to uh, working in a laboratory. Amazing. Okay, so I, what I would say is, I mean, we, I think with One Nucleus, we sometimes run these things um, it, sort of centrally. So at the moment it's being given online mostly, but that is sometimes on the, at the behest of a company who's got several people they want to train. So we've done that kind of thing. Um, so for instance, for King's College um, London, we've run two full training courses for, for their staff um, on biological safety management practice. So it's exclusively for them. The other, co the other courses um, that benefit from being done in-house are the masterclasses because yeah. you know, people actually know one another, have to work with each mm -hmm. other. So it's quite sort of advantageous. Mm -hmm. So it can be done either way. Mm -hmm. And would you say the, the lab health and safety one as well would be benefited um delivered in-house or yes. yeah. yeah I would agree that it's much better because mm. everybody then knows what the labs look yeah. like there's a common theme to it whereas yeah. if it's for different companies they've all got different things they're all doing different things so um it is it is um I would say exceptionally effective if done for a particular mm -hmm. company yes. yeah yeah much more specific then, I guess, and you can apply it to your own lab. So yeah. going back to the BSO course, which now has actually been approved online by IOSH, which is amazing yes. news. Um, yeah. What kind of content is covered? Well, we start off, as all my courses are, with um, the legal um, background, which is what is the main um, legal um, side of things? and where can you find out more about it? Because legislation is something that tends to turn people off. Um, mm. But in this course, I do at least cover the main underpinning law. 
in detail also to be able to explain the difference between criminal law, which is the law of the land, and civil law, which is when somebody wants to take a, a claim for negligence. So, so we kind of like cover the dif differences um, uh, of that sort of thing too. Um, we talk about, I talk about uh, the role of the biological safety officer, the sorts of things they have to do within the company, and that um, is uh, the kind of practical things like helping to run the biological safety committee, maybe also helping with inspections, but also to have in mind the fact that in doing this job, people need additional skills, mm. like interpersonal skills and they need to be able to be assertive and sometimes that's quite difficult for people if they are uh, depending on what position they are in a hierarchy so we kind of like talk talk through those sort of things on scenario basis we talk about risk assessment generally and then focus in on cost which of course does apply to biological agents so um, how we actually apply it um, and um, in practical terms again what that really means what is a local exhaust ventilation what is a biological safety cabinet so lots of things surrounding um, the function and definitions of those kind of things we then move on to genetically modified organisms um, and um, what the legislation again demands in the way of notifying the health and safety executive also um, what is required in the way of risk assessment so we go through detailed risk assessments for GMOs and also um, you do a scenario of um, an example of a mock-up risk assessment mm -hmm. which has got some big mistakes in it that they need to spot. <laughs> um, then we move on to the role of HSE, the Health and Safety Executive and the Environment Agency and um, there are, I've got a couple of presentations uh, about how inspections um, work from the HSE and also um, about um, the genetically modified organisms, what's changed. Because if somebody is coming to this from having um, been in the GM field years ago, things have changed. We talk about um, human tissue, the biological safety in human tissue, because many um, people are actually working with blood and, and other samples of human tissue. And we end that um, day on day one by talking about ergonomics, which is something which can cause a lot of problems with people's wrists in a laboratory. A lot of pipetting going on, a lot of movements like that, and therefore people can be particularly at risk from that. Mm -hmm. And we do some um, scenarios about how people would deal with some tricky substance, uh, tricky situations. Mm -hmm. Day two is much more about containment working what does containment lab mean what does it look like um, how does that fit in with kosh and um, what it means from the point of view of um, being able to do a risk assessment how should we go about that in this context and what uh, really what should it look like and what should it not look like because i have many examples of what it should not look like um, then i talk about specialist work like work which is um maybe working with animals working with um, ionizing radiation and work which is subject to the anti-terrorism crime and security act so that's things like toxins in particular um also particular organisms so staphylococcal enterotoxin b which is often used in molecular biology is subject to this legislation mm -hmm. then the last taught session which is in the afternoon is lots of issues to do with laboratory management so it's um, what does supervision mean? What does competent mean? What might a health and safety um, inspector do? You know, if they actually come to the site, do you have to um, if, do you have to comply with them if they say we're coming this afternoon? Those sort of issues that can exercise your mind greatly. And we end up the whole course by um, doing uh, an examination in two parts. Short questions is the first one, and then two very short ass, um, essays for the second part. And um, I have been running this course for 15 years, and I think in all that time, something like about three people have failed, mm. which I think is, you know, amazing that that most Definitely. people get it. So <laughs> absolutely. Think, 
stay awake, you will be all right. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely. That's a great summary, actually. Con it's considering how much information um, there is in those two days. That's a, a great, great summary. Mm -hmm. um, so who do you think that this course is typically aimed at? Okay, well, it's the person who finds themselves it, i.e. the biological safety officer who may be unwillingly mm -hmm. have to do the role because nobody else will do it. Mm -hmm. Although, as I always say, if you do your job well, it might be worth a pay rise. So there's something in it for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other, the other people, uh, so existing biological safety officers who've had no formal training will mm -hmm. benefit from it too. Mm -hmm. And people who are associated in some way with the running of a biological laboratory. So it could be the lab manager or it could be the facilities manager, um, especially in a small company where people are having to do several roles. Um, you know, it could be um, combined with uh, other roles as well, too. And as long as you've got a reasonable appreciation of what a lab looks like, um, you've got um, a scientific background. Um, of either a degree or something equivalent, then you would be able to cope with the course. Excellent. And so you mentioned the biosafety masterclass. What is the difference then between the two day course and the one day? Yeah, the masterclass assumes that you've already done something to the standard of the biological safety management mm -hmm. practice two day course. Mm -hmm. So it assumes you already know um, all the elements of mm -hmm. what a biological safety officer role in, um, involves. But the masterclass serves two particular purposes. It serves to refresh people's memory of what they once knew and have forgotten, because memory is short, and especially if you haven't done any kind of training in this area for three or four years, you may well forget things. So it's a good kind of refresher. Um, and of course, things also change within a company quite um, dramatically in that time. So it's a benefit um, to bring people up to speed if the nature of the work changes. So it differs in the sense that it covers similar ground, but not in so much detail. Mm -hmm. The um, class exercises are quite different, um, but um, it's themed along the same lines of the same kind of content, but in much less detail. Excellent. So the lab health and safety course, who is that one more aimed at? That's more aimed, I would say, at um, either laboratory managers mm -hmm. or um, it could also be for the um, for company health and safety officers mm -hmm. especially if they don't have a lab background so they need to learn about how does health and safety apply in the laboratory venue um, it has very particular meanings um, and uh, there are very particular requirements for what the lab should um, look like things like the working the surfaces um, of the uh, benches and what the sort of um, main things are to do with that. So um, it's a different kind of angle. Um, occasionally I've had somebody who's been involved in doing lab fit outs. Okay. They wanted to understand from the scientific yeah. point of view. Yeah. So, um, and occasionally also I've had people who know that the company will be expanding into a new building and they want to look out Mm -hmm. for things to be able to do you know sort of much more effective be effective in the design and working with the architect more effectively wonderful so you have actually had quite an exciting career journey and varied i guess yeah very what, very kind of, <laughs> what kind <laughs> of um, maybe do, do you want to say a little bit about your yeah. career journey and then we can go on to talk about the kind of opportunities that the courses will open up yes of course yes yes I'm um, a right mixture of things um <laughs> my my first degree is as a biologist um I have high degrees as well too one of which is in biochemical subject so I know about from way back when about containment working and that sort of thing my first, um, in my early sort of career, I did um, quality control from supermarket chain. 
Mm. And um, that was interesting. The yeah. sort of things that used to turn up in the food were pretty awful. <laughs> <sometimes>. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, I think probably the worst one was finding a sealed bag of porridge oats, which had a whole mouse in it. <gasps> no! No! Yes. Oh, indeed. my word. And you had stuff like that. Was that day to day you'd see or, or like a rare occasion? No, that particular one would be a rare occasion. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> More commonly, it would be something like um, a meat product that had got a chip of bone in it, maybe, you know, things that you could understand how they got. Yeah. It. Yeah. So um, mostly they were not truly horrible things. Just <laughs> occasionally they were. They, they really were. Oh, crikey. I don't know what I would have done if I found a mouse <laughs> in <my> porridge. <laughs> so well, it was you. dead. The main thing is it was dead, oh, so it didn't God. run off. <laughs> Gosh. but it was sealed in the bag so it must have got in in the factory There's, there was no other way oh no there. that's almost even worse <laughs> i know well you, you learn to be a kind of sleuth i mean it's it's possible you can tell if you've got say you opened um, a jar of jam and it's got a wasp in it you can tell whether mm. the wasp's been cooked in the jar or not or whether it's actually f flown in in the customer's house right I people will make spurious claims really oh yes 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 absolutely crazy claims sometimes yeah. and, you know that would you know they'd end up charging a huge amount of money and saying you know i want to be reimbursed for this well you'd have to kind of like come up with some kind of reasonable yeah anyway that was that was interesting and the p things that people complained about i remember the most trivial one was somebody complained that on um toilet rolls which had average sheets of 240 sheets per roll there was only 238 and they oh my <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe that somebody would do it them. yeah well they did they clearly did so we then had to go and get tons of um, toilet rolls off the shelf and count them and see what our no. average was. So, yeah anyway it was sometimes it was quite fun doing it. yeah i can imagine that's quite a fun team thing almost to do so <laughs> You know, really knowing what you're going to do. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But after about five years of doing that job, I then went to work for a research organisation, um, mm. which was quite sort of interesting. Um, and I did loads of different jobs. Uh, I was there for 11 years, but I did lots of different things. So um, mm. I did um, reference standards for uh, a project for the uh, European community. Uh, I also worked on another project with the EC which was um, preparing um, foods contaminated with, uh, deliberately contaminated with certain things. Mm -hmm. I did food sabotage analysis, um, which is where people poison things on the shelves and you've got to eventually try and track them down and figure out who they are and what they're after and why they're so aggrieved. Um, I did, um, I did uh, conference, putting together conferences at short notice. So, when I was working there, Chernobyl went up and I had five days to put together a conference for the food wow. industry. So wow. there was lots of challenges working there and it was, it yes. was fascinating. It, no two days were ever the same and they just weren't. Mm. Um, and I was there for about 11 years, but I did lots of different things there. Um, and I had lots of the opportunity to do lots of things. And after about 11 years and, and, and you can't have a social life or a family life if you never know where you're going to be the following afternoon because <laughs> you've got to go and solve a problem in a factory yeah um, I worked out what I actually liked doing and um, what I could afford to work for so I took a big pay cut and mm -hmm. um, retrained in health and safety and I was very fortunate that where I went they went halves with me and paid the fees mm -hmm. for me to do this and gave me the time off and I did I paid for the accommodation and did all the sort of swatting and exams and things like that yeah. so I qualified as a health and safety professional and within about three years I got back up to the salary that I was on wow and um it's been a sort of like journey ever since there in health and safety and um in 2008 when I thought I would slow down a little bit and do much less <laughs> <laughs> I started my consultancy thinking I'll give this three years and it's I'm still going 
Yeah. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. I really do love it. I love working with people. Um, I love um, helping people to understand what they need to do, taking people who no idea what the concept of risk assessment's about and being able, enabling them to actually write a decent risk assessment. That is a huge accomplishment. Oh. So I really enjoy that. And I think um, also I'm the sort of safety person that is never about stopping people doing things, but it's always about enabling people to work safely in, in the best way um, possible. So I don't think any, any of the things I've done has ever been wasted. So for me to be a good um, safety consultant or good safety officer you need to have been there worked at it got mm. a lot of experience so although you can actually do a master's in health and safety or in occupational health and safety you need the experience to underpin mm. that to be an effective health and safety person now if you're at a crossroads in your career and you've done you know sort of different things you may be worked in an analytical lab maybe you've worked in a um, a bio a pharma company and you're thinking well you know the sort of work it's got kind of very repetitive maybe I should look at something else the health, retraining in health and safety does open up a lot of avenues mm -hmm. and the avenues are obviously you can go to consultancy but it, the avenue of becoming the health and safety manager in a company is incredibly satisfying because mm -hmm. you help the company to achieve compliance Mm -hmm. in an area that if the company gets it wrong they could be facing a huge fine or that people could become ill or have an accident so your role can make a huge difference um, and there's different ways of doing the training um, the best way is to go through um, IOSH which is the um, Institute for Occupational Safety and Health who are the ones that approve the biological safety management and practice course it's yeah. the biggest professional body for health and safety you can do it different ways you can do distance learning which is quite tough you have to be very disciplined um, and you can do it by sort of like um, I did it as sort of like um, concentrated batches of it because I need to be bullied into doing things like that so you can do it different ways but I, for me it's been great absolutely a, a great choice and um, for other people it may well be if they're thinking about mm -hmm. it and I'm always happy to talk to people about what I think would be a good choice for them yeah amazing gosh and do you know it just fascinates me I love hearing your stories about the food sabotage and the quality control it's just gosh I guess how would you I mean, it might even be enough for these exciting stories, but how would you kind of promote this as a career? Because I don't know. I don't know whether a lot of people when they leave universities, well, with the degree that you had, did you always kind of think, I'd like to go off into health and safety? Or oh, how no. would you kind of promote this career? What, health and safety career? Yeah. Yeah, no, I did not think that for one minute. <laughs> I had already... By this, I, by the time um, I think I did other things until I was forty. Um, I was a bench scientist for quite a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, if I went back into the lab now, I would be total rubbish, absolute rubbish. But um, I did a lot of research work, um, and some of that was actually on really significant things. But what that did was it equipped me to know one end of a pipette from another and to be able to figure out why containment working so important so it kind of like my earlier career led on to health and safety yeah quite so I really knew how important it was yeah. you know to get it right you know of course. um and I also knew that if you got it wrong you know there could be very dire mm -hmm. consequences so as a as a career choice for mm. me it meant using what I'd already done, but mm. just going a, on a, a, a kind of off a tangent into a different yeah. area. Absolutely. I guess then it, it's an opportunity for people if you're maybe in a, you're working for your company at the moment and you're not totally sure that it's right for you, but you've got these transferable skills that you can take and yes. go elsewhere. Which is yes, quite, that's very think. definitely true. Lots of yeah. reasons. And the other thing that you can do if you're working in a company is to 
offer to if there's a if there is a health and safety manager there mm. offer to shadow them yeah or you could also um if it's a small company you could offer to take on the duties of the health and safety mm -hmm. officer mm -hmm. provided the company will let you do a bit of training of course yeah so you can get into it sort of easily you don't Absolutely. have to necessarily chuck everything up and do it like i did which is mm. you know was a fairly drastic way of doing it but worked for me and wouldn't work for everybody i don't think no definitely well thank you so much for discussing a little bit about your career journey and the courses um and hopefully to those who have watched it um we might see you in future courses yeah Let's just hope we do, yes. <laughs> You're very <you>. welcome. <laughs>